Welcome to my AP Chemistry course. I'm Jeremy Krug, and if you haven't already done so, hope you subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you learned something from this video, because my goal is to put the entire AP Chemistry course up here so on YouTube so that you can get a five on your exam. Well, in this video, we're learning about special types of redox reactions, specifically reactions of halogens and a few other types that we could include as well. Now, halogens, like most uh, non-metals tend to be reduced. You know, in, in, uh, uh, in our previous videos, we said that metals tend to be oxidized. Well, non-metals tend to get reduced. So we can write another activity series for just the halogens. This is like a special activity series that just has the four main halogens on here. And the way this works is halogens on this activity series can be reduced by the halide ions underneath them. So this works kind of like the other activity series that I showed you in the last video for the metals. So for example, if we have fluorine and we add some bromide ions to that, well here's fluorine and bromide ions are underneath it. So yeah, that's going to react. So we'll have fluoride ions and bromine. And of course you got to balance that, but that's the reaction that takes place. If we have bromine liquid, being added to chloride ions. Well, here's, uh, let's find bromine on our activity series right there. The chloride ions are too high, aren't they? So that's not going to work. That's a no reaction. So halogens can only be reduced by the ions underneath them. If we take bromide, or I'm sorry, bromine liquid and add iodide to that on the other hand, well, here's bromine. Yep. Iodide is underneath it, so it can react. So we'll have bromide ions and iodide, and, and iodine, rather. And of course, we balance that. So how does this work? Well, let's try an example. Pure chlorine gas is bubbled into a solution of potassium iodide. Well, we have chlorine gas, so that's Cl2. And we know that nonmetals will react with nonmetallic ions. So Iodide is the other part of this. That means that this time the potassium is the spectator, isn't it? So I'm just going to cross that out because we're not even going to use that. So chlorine, first of all, we should probably see if this is even going to work. Uh, here's chlorine. Is iodide underneath it? Yes, it is. So this is going to work. So chlorine is going to produce chloride ions. And I've, I've gone ahead and put two of them to balance that out. And then iodide would make iodine, which is diatomic, so I write I2, and of course that has to be balanced as well. Well, now we can start looking at charge. And so we have a charge of zero on the left side in the first half reaction, and it looks like negative two overall over here. So to balance that out, we're going to need two electrons on the left side to make it all equal out. So we're going to do that. And then in the next half reaction, I've got, looks like negative two on the left side compared to zero on the right side. So to make everything equal, I need to put two electrons on the product side, just like this. So it looks like in this case, we're gaining electrons. Chlorine's gaining electrons, so that is reduction. And iodide is actually losing electrons, so that is oxidation. Well, now when it's time to add these together, we can see that these add up together pretty easily because we have two electrons on both sides, so they're going to fall out very easily whenever we add these together. And so there's our overall balanced equation. Remember, chlorine is a gas, whereas iodine is actually a solid on the periodic table. And the ions, of course, are aqueous. So let's try another type of redox reaction. When you take pure elements, and you react them with each other, or you burn them, that's also considered a redox reaction. So if we take sodium metal as an example and place it into a beaker containing pure chlorine gas, well, two elements are reacting, so we're just going to put them together, and sure enough, that actually is redox. So we have sodium metal, and we're going to add it to chlorine gas, that's Cl2. And when we add Na and Cl2, we get NaCl, you know, because, you know, positive one and the negative one. And so that's the reaction. Now, I know you have to balance it, 
you know oh, and so you know there's no water here so it, it's not solution it's just sodium solid you balance the chlorines and balance the sodiums and there we have that so sodium is going from a zero to a plus one so sodium is being oxidized and chlorine is going from a zero to a negative one so that one's being reduced just like that how about iron filings and sulfur flowers are heated together vigorously in a crucible well iron filings that's just plain old fe isn't it iron and sulfur flowers we can write that as s if you write it as s8 that's okay as well but you know for simplicity's sake i'll just write it as s in this example and so they're going to get together the most common form of that is just fes and that's balanced already iron is zero and here it's positive so a positive two so it looks like this is going up in charge so it's oxidized sulfur is reduced because it's going from a zero over to a negative two on this side let's try another example a strip of magnesium metal is burned in air anytime you take a metal like magnesium and burn it in air that just means that you're reacting it with oxygen gas so burning something if you see that on a test or on a homework burning something just reacts it with oxygen so you see what the product will be mgo you know because it's a plus two minus two and there's no water here so it's not aqueous it's just solid um, and so we balance the equation we have to balance the oxygens and balance those magnesiums again and we can tell that magnesium is being oxidized because it goes from a charge of zero over here to plus two over here and oxygen is being reduced and it goes from zero to negative two sulfur is burned in air a very smelly reaction if you ever smell that it smells like burning eggs so sulfur and then if it's burned in air we're, we're reacting with o2 and so we're just going to make sulfur dioxide from that that's just the most common compound produced there and so uh, that is already balanced we know oxygen is going from zero to a negative two so oxygen is being reduced going down in charge the sulfur is going up in charge isn't it? it's going from a zero to what is that it looks like a plus four over here so that's oxidized so once again a lot of these uh, synthesis reactions are redox as well here's our last example for today a piece of sodium metal is burned in air so sodium metal is na and then if we're burning it in air that's a plus o2 and so we're going to make na2o because you know it's a plus one minus two when you swap the charges so we need, do need to balance that because our um, looks like our oxygens are not balanced so i'll do that now our sodiums have to be balanced with a four over here so now it's balanced and looks like sodium is being oxidized as as most metals are it's going from a zero to a plus one and then oxygen is reduced because it's going from a zero charge down to a negative two so once again in this series of videos in these last four videos we've done lots and lots of examples of redox reactions i know some of these videos have been long but that's because it takes a while to get used to this it takes several examples to get the hang of redox it's something that's new for most students hope you learned something from these videos if you did please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel already smash that subscribe button hit that bell so that you'll be notified of all the videos that come out as i release these in this ap chemistry complete course i want you to get a five on this exam my name is jeremy krug and i've been teaching ap chemistry for over 20 years and i want to share my experience with you so if you like my video join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.